everyone! Last time you learned about how to identify if a substance, compound, or something is a mineral. Today, I'm gonna teach you what are the properties of a mineral. It is important to learn the properties of a specific mineral to enable to someone to identify that particular mineral. For example, is this one a biotite? How about this one? Is this a diamond or quartz? How about this one? Is this a mica or talc? Geologists often use these key properties in identifying and classifying minerals. The first one is the optical property, which includes a mineral's visible appearance. The second one is the crystal shape or the habit. This is the overall shape of the mineral. And the third one is the mineral strength, or the mineral's capacity to resist breakage or deformation. Let's start with the optical properties, which includes luster, color, and strip. Luster refers to the quality of light reflected from a mineral surface. Minerals that exhibit very high surface reflectance has metallic luster. One of the examples is gold. Some minerals such as galena develops tarnish after being exposed to atmosphere and thus is regarded to exhibit submetallic luster. The mineral hematite is also regarded to exhibit submetallic luster. Minerals exhibiting non-metallic cluster are often described as dull, earthly, such as phesomelane in the picture, glassy like calcite and actinolite, pearly like talc, greasy, silky, and others. Okay. The second optical property is color. Minerals exhibit different coloration from yellow to red, from white to black. However, color is regarded as an unreliable way in identifying minerals as it can be misleading because some minerals such as quartz and fluorite can have different varieties of hues. Another optical property is the streak or the powder form of a mineral. Streak is produced when you rub a mineral against a streak plate. In the example, you'll see that the mineral produced dark colored streak. Dark colored streak is usually exhibited by minerals which has metallic cluster, while light colored streak is produced by minerals which has non metallic cluster. Streak is usually consistent even in minerals which exhibit different coloration. After the optic optical property, now we have the crystal shape or habit, which refers to as the overall shape of the crystals or its aggregates. If not suppressed during its formation, minerals tend to mimic the internal arrangement of their atoms. Take NaCl or halide or most commonly known as table salt as an example. Halide has a cubic appearance due to the atomic arrangement of sodium and chlorine during its formation. Now we have the third property which is the mineral strength, which includes hardness, cleavage, and fracture. The strength of a mineral is dependent on the strength of the chemical bonds that a mineral contains. Mineral strength refers to the mineral's capacity to hold its shape, resist breakage and deformation under the presence of stress. Diamond is regarded as, as the strongest and hardest mineral of, uh, mineral of all. But what is hardness first? Hardness is the capacity of a mineral to resist a scratching or abrasion. By rubbing mineral against each other and vice versa, we can determine the hardness. For example, we rub, we rub mineral A with mineral B. Mineral B was able to resist deformation. Therefore, mineral B is harder than mineral A. The Moss scale is used in obtaining the numerical value of hardness. It is consists of 10 minerals ranging from 1 being the softest to 10 being the hardest. It means that gypsum is harder than talc, calcite is harder than gypsum, and so on and so forth. Take note that the Moss scale shows relative ranking, so it does not imply that gypsum is twice as hard as talc. In fact, it is only slightly harder than talc. The figure also shows that the streak plate has a hardness of 6.5, which implies that quartz, topaz, Corundum and diamonds and other mineral which has higher relative hardness will not produce any streak. 
Now we have cleavage. Cleavage refers to the tendency of mineral to cleave along parallel planes in the presence of stress. It is due to the weak chemical bonding in some parts of the mineral. Let's take the mineral mica for example. Mica has a very weak chemical bonding in one direction, making it form sheets under the presence of stress. While mica cleaves in one direction, both feldspar and hornblende cleaves in two directions. Halite and calcite both cleaves at three directions. And lastly, we have fluorite which cleaves in four directions. The last of the mineral strength is fracture. Fracture is exhibited by minerals which has an equal or nearly equal strong chemical bonding in all directions. Most minerals exhibit irregular, irregular fracture and produce uneven surfaces, while some like quartz breaks into smooth curved surfaces resembling a broken glass, exhibits conchoidal fracture. Today, you learned the properties of minerals, namely the optical property, the crystal shape or habit, and the mineral strength. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please type it in the comment section below. And please don't forget to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be notified if I release new tutorial. Thank you for watching!